My second home, home, community, sorority, is a group of women who all come together, back each other up and go out to conquer the world as a team. Enigmatic, awesome, liberating, unforgettable, inspiring, friendly, friendly. Everyone's so lovely and has been since I arrived on my first day. I was just struck by how nice everyone was. Ambition, prosperous, light. A new family I've found. Sisterhood because you have people around you who stick by you inside and outside of an academic setting, whether it be the highs or the lows. Outside Sidwick where the pond is because you can literally look across the whole garden up until Peel and Clough. The Peel Swing. I've had some cries. <laughs> I've had some really great laughs and memories with people. The architecture. I'm obsessed with the windows, like <laughs> the big round windows. It would be the corridor and particularly the wallpaper and the sound of footsteps going along as they change. I like the courtyard that's just behind the Porter's Lodge. I think it's called the Mathematical Courtyard. Nobody knows you're there, but you can see everyone coming and going. The College Hall. The ceiling is like a wedding cake. <laughs> and I have a little rose bush right outside my window. The boat club in its entirety. Um, you can come here very quiet, very shy, and you just grow and grow and grow and you're fearless. The view from my room. So I've got a bay window that looks out over the monument and then it's really nice because I can always sort of see the sunset every evening. Like so different to everything that it had been in the centre of town with like the heat and the number of people and the tourists. And I was just like, yeah. Yeah, no, this is nice. This is where I want to be. The favourite thing about Newnham is the library. The old part of the library, up the top floor, the big window that looks over the Sidgwick site. The Fife of Gates. It was my first memory of Newnham because my elder sister was a historian at Newnham and she had a room above the Fife Arch. The time of daffodils. The daffodils out by the old labs are the best in Cambridge when it's snowing. There's something very good about the white snow and the red brick. The sun is shining. Sunny. It's sunny and everyone's out on the lawns. <laughs> no matter what the season is, the gardening department does such a good job. Newnham you know, is at its best when it's really proud of its history. Empowering young women. Celebrating self and its people. Students and staff and academics working together. Buzzing. Which hopefully we'll see again very soon. The people, staff to the fellows, to the dosses, to the students. I mean, the catering team is always willing to go the extra mile to please students to make sure that people feel very welcome. I don't think in any other college I can just walk around and smile at strangers and receive a smile back. It's diverse, eccentric, funny, clever women. There's a little bit of rebelliousness in there. As the head porter, it's something that, that we're always watching out for, but secretly, you know, I understand. Kindness makes Newnham Newnham. Kindness drives how we interact with each other. It drives a conversation down a corridor. Listening. Solidarity makes Newnham Newnham. I want to say the porters. <laughs> oh my God, beware high winds. Make sure that you didn't get blown away. Yeah. <laughs> Brunch makes Newnham Newnham. And I'll always get the same thing, right? Big peas, hash browns, sausage, eggs, everything. And then I take my little tray and I go and sit at the round table with like some of my friends. And we just chat for like two hours until the buttery staff are like, please go out. <laughs> I think it's just like a nice way to, at the end of the week, just relax and catch up with friends because I feel like usually in hectic terms you don't get to do that often. There was one night around 1am, I went out with my college wife to look at the stars at Newnham and then we were sitting on, the, on a bench at Newnham and like we were just talking and chatting and then all of a sudden there was a shooting star and it was so cute. We had enormous fun making water bombs and then filling them and throwing them down from the balcony and I missed my tutor by about an inch. <laughs> Every 1st of March, St David's Day, she would nip down to Cambridge Market really early, buy arms full of daffodils and just go and put them outside the door of all her friends. They'd forgotten that a room inspection was taking place, trying to sort of block the cage with their body. What's behind you? Nothing's behind me, nothing's behind me. It's like, oh, I think there's something behind you. In fact, we can smell it. <laughs> oh, they had a hamster, bless them. It TEDx Newnham for 2018. As much as ever, anything else, it was in the process of creating it that we had such fun as Newnham alumni making it happen. We do sometimes get weird things left behind. You don't need a saucepan in the library. <laughs> have you seen the plastic babies in the library? I have. You just the first one last term, I think.
The one had been posted into the suggestions box, and we found another one on one of the Indian carvings. But there could be more still to be discovered. Everyone is vegan, but we always run out of beef lasagna. Early morning bicycle rides, me and Louise heading out to the boat house. And here I am now presenting the boat race. Three of them in this year's blue boats were from Unum College. When I used to climb in, when I was, you know, coming back from a date or something late, I think it's 11 o'clock is curfew. You can't get in after that. And there was a place where I, I used to squeeze through sort of two bars that you could prise apart. But I've always been fat and I got stuck. <laughs> and the boy I was with had to push me through. Push, 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 push. And I did make it. I did get through. The fire alarm went off. At about one o'clock in the morning, so we all trooped downstairs, all met in the porter's lodge, all in our pyjamas, looking rather sleepy. And then the word went round that it wasn't a practice, it was a real fire. And about half the girls shot back upstairs and came back down with this whole bunch of sheepish men. But the guys sometimes ended up grabbing whatever clothes were closest, so it wouldn't be unusual to see guys out there in the girls' dressing gowns, for example, or slippers. The ease of friendship. There isn't any of the jostling around you can have at school. And there was no hierarchical stuff, like you can get in jobs. You drifted in and out of each other's rooms. You talked at breakfast. But it was an uncompromised friendship. I miss most about my time in Newnham was that wonderful sense in my 20s that the world was at my feet. And absolutely anything was possible. And I don't think I can ever recapture that sense of infinite possibility again. The permission to read and learn and the freedom that gives you to expand your mind. Relative freedom that you feel you have. And once you leave that, it's kind of like a sense of security that you leave behind. I think it is this mixture of informality, support, and cohesion. It'd be only three years, but it doesn't feel like three years. It feels like sort of nine years each term is almost like a year. Think in your time there, savour every moment. Union keeps on being a progressive space. Sometimes it relies so hard on its legacy of being one of the first women's colleges that it forgets that all the colleges take women now and it needs to continue moving. Yes, it was great for it then, but what does that mean if you're not trying to be pioneering now? You can't just rely on an old legacy when it's 150 years ago. They should let trans students self-identify. To keep on producing smart, independently minded women who are determined to improve their world. To remain true to its progressive and feminist origins. In the next 150 years, I want it to keep pushing boundaries. Of encouraging young women to have confidence to challenge and to dare to do different. Retain and protect its sense of independence and its pioneering spirit, but expand to spread that to more young women across the world and older women, frankly. You've got to give the young people a chance to run the show. You don't want people in their 70s and 80s making decisions. You know, I'll help out. I'll give advice if I'm asked. But otherwise, you've got to move over and let someone else come and take charge. 150 years, maybe Newnham will say... Well, OK, I think the battle for women's equality has been won and we don't need a women's college. Now, I'm not sure that that will be true. What I feel very strongly about at the moment is that the battle for women's equality hasn't been won. If anybody tells me we don't need a women's college in Cambridge, I will tell them to piss off. You kind of hope that maybe the world will be such that you won't feel that. But it, I think it'll probably take 150 years.